In this video, we'll model a class ring with gems inside it, cruise a sphere to the work plane, and then choose a size for it. I'm going to make this ring oversized so it shows up better. Then cruise a box and make it the same size as the sphere. Hit the tab key to move between the text fields. You can see that the sphere and the box are the same size. Now we're going to draw some lines on the box that will determine the form that we're going to carve the sphere into. I'm just making an angled line at the top and a straight line at the bottom, but you can make angled lines at the top and bottom, or you can use the spline to make curved lines. So you click on the vertical face of the box and then click the two endpoints of the line. We'll use these lines as cutting edges for the split solid operation. Click split solid, click the sphere, and then click the two lines and they will cut the sphere at those locations. Click on the work plane to finish the split solid operation. Then delete everything you don't need. Scale it to tweak the form. Click non-uniform and then you can scale it along one axis. Then bring in a cylinder to cut the ring hole. You'll want to size it to the size of your finger. And then make it long enough so it will fit through the entire ring. Move it into place. and then subtract the cylinder from the ring. Now that's about it, but you can tweak it even more by selecting the faces and then push pulling them. Here I'm selecting the edges. If you hold the shift key down, you can select multiple edges and then fillet them. And there's our ring. We need to hollow it out though so that we can put gems inside it. So select it and send it to Mesh Mixer. I'm clicking on the Analysis Units tool to size it. As I said earlier, I'm making this oversized just so it shows up better. You can type whatever size you want in the text fields and the whole ring will size proportionately. Click Edit Hollow and it will hollow the ring out and then you can adjust the offset. Again, you can, you can type in the text field. Putting that shader on, we can see it is indeed hollow now. Now we're selecting an orientation. Mesh Mixer thinks that's the best orientation, so we'll go with it. And then generate supports.
That looks good. Now let's print it. Here we'll choose the settings. And these are the settings that I chose. I adjusted the layer height and the number of shells and I chose a 10% infill. That will not apply to the hollow part, it will only apply to the solid part of the ring. The hollow part will remain hollow. The preview will show us the tool path. And we can decide where when would be the best time to insert the gems. This just gives you an idea of when you'll want to be watching the model under construction. You can just throw the gems right there into that void. Note that supports will be built inside also. Now I didn't have any clear filament on hand so I did this with MakerBot Natural Filament, which is semi-transparent. More opaque than transparent, but that's what I used. Start construction and watch for the point when you'd like to insert some gems or beads. That's what I put in. Or LED lights. Pause the printer. Throw in whatever you want to throw in and then resume. I'm taking it off the build plate. I'll have to take off all those supports. I use a pliers for that. There you have it.